Hey, what's up guys? Sean or Mustang09 and we're back in my garage. We went racing a couple of days ago and now it's time to assess and fix some things. We had one thing that could have been a potential catastrophic failure for us. So I need to address that and I wanna show you guys. It's with the airlift setup on the front. It happened to me once before and I didn't notice it until after we were done racing. So thank the Lord, we didn't have any major issues. The second thing would be the rear end on my Mustang needs to be realigned. It's off to one side, just a smidge. Uh, I could tell when uh, one of my drag tires, my slicks, was rubbing one of the body parts inside the wheel well. So I need to readjust that and then it'll fix that issue. Not a big deal. And it still drives straight. It's not like it tracks weird or anything. I wanna give a pro tip to you guys on, well, I'll say amateur tip because I'm definitely not a pro racer. But uh, these pants right here, these are some uh, race quip safety pants. They are, uh, let's see, SFI 1. So they're just from Race Crip, not a sponsored video at all. But we were going out to the track and it's gotten really hot here in Texas and humid. And just walking around the pits and working on the car in jeans sucks. Like it's horrible. It just, it's super sweaty. You get swamp butt. You guys know what I'm talking about. So I went ahead and bought some pants. These aren't the best fire rated pants they make. They make higher ratings. These are just kind of entry level stuff. But I wanted these so that I could just slip them on over, you know, my shorts and make life super easy. So I could put these on in between passes and then take them off when I get back to the pits. And these things were awesome. Picked them up at Summit Racing. It's nice to live down the street from a place like Summit where they have like everything you need in stock for a race car. Moving on though, I've got the car jacked up. It's on jack stands. I need to get underneath there and adjust the pan hard bar so that I can bring the rear end over just a hair and then we'll be good to go. All right guys, so if you have a Mustang that's a solid rear axle and you have an adjustable pan hard bar, an easy way to align it is to just do a string alignment. So you'll get two pieces of string, something to weigh it down so that it'll, it'll sit straight down. We're just gonna use these two nuts here and we will cut the string once I can find the end. So we have our measuring devices or the beginning of our measuring devices. We need this and some painter's tape. Painter's tape does not leave adhesive on the paint of the car if you're not leaving it on there for very long. Definitely don't put painter's tape on your car and leave it in the sun. You'll have issues. But for temporary purposes, this is gonna be on the car for 10 minutes at most. We'll take it off, we won't have any issues with it. So we're gonna tape these to the car and I'll show you how you do that. So what you're gonna to wanna to do now is take one of your strings with your nuts on the end or some sort of weight. Take our blue painter's tape here and we're gonna hold this up to where the nut is in line with the center of the wheel right here. And then we will tape it to our fender like so. And so now this will sit where it needs to be. We'll take a tape measure and measure the distance from the, the hanging nut to the center of the wheel. And then we'll do the same on the other side and that'll tell us which way it needs to come over and by how much. So we'll do the same on the other side, take measurements and then get to adjusting. On this side of the car, we're gonna take our first measurements. I have the knot for the string on the top side of the nut, so I'll measure it from one side to the center. And it is at almost two inches. Like the center of the, the nut is at the two inch mark. And then we'll go to the other side and measure there. This one's about two and a half inches to the center. So we need to come to the driver's side about half an inch to get it back where it should be. This is where having a camera or a second set of eyes really helps because when you're under here turning it, sometimes it's hard to tell which way the axle is shifting. Uh, we'll keep a good eye on it, but you just need one of these wrenches. So what you'll wanna do, this is your adjustable pan hard bar right here. It goes across that way. Look at all this red stuff under here from that burnout I did. Anyways, these are locking nuts here. You'll unscrew those so they're stop locking and then you'll turn the center piece here and that will, depending on if you adjust it upwards or downwards, it's left to right. Keep your eyes on that white string right there and as I turn this piece down here, you'll notice this tire is coming closer to the white string. Here we go, just a little bit. One more, and now we'll take more measurements. 
One key thing is to make sure you're making minor adjustments each, each time. You don't want to be making uh, too drastic of changes and then you have to go backwards. Of the nut is at two and a quarter. We'll go to the other side, take a measurement. We're at two inches. So we need to go probably another turn and a half or turn and then it should be perfect. All right, guys, another easy way for me to tell if my rear end is aligned, which I know a lot of guys don't have this convenience. I have the airlift system, so I can slam it and I can tell where the tire sits inside the fender. And you know, mine does touch a little all the way aired out, so I can see that there. Go to the other side and it'll look even. So here, it's pretty much the same as it is on the other side. Uh, before, you could fit more of your finger in between this side of the wheel because the rear end was pushed that way. So I think we're pretty good aligned. This is a cheap trick to do at home with uh, the string and the little nuts and the tape measure, and it works out pretty well. Time to tackle problem number two, which is the biggest problem of them all, or could have potentially been the biggest problem of them all. I mean, a bag failure on the front end of this car going 120 at the end of the drag strip at the big end could have been completely catastrophic. So I'm glad that didn't happen. I've had this issue once before and I thought I fixed it, but apparently it's a common issue with the bag setup on these. So I need to get it jacked up, get this front wheel taken off, and I'll show you guys exactly what's happening. With the tire removed, you can now see my front end setup with the airbag. The issue I'm having is this right here. This is wrapped around the front piece and it shouldn't be that way. This is supposed to be turned onto the other side. It's rotating for whatever reason. I'm not sure if it's from driving and the vibrations are turning it or what happened, but I have to lower this down. It's just two bolts, so it's not bad. And then it's four bolts up here. I think 10 or 12 mils drops it down. And then I can unlock this collar. Well, see, it's already loose. Look at that. Look at how loose that is. So I need to take it, drop it down, and then um, turn this so that it's facing the right direction, and then make sure this collar is super tight. I don't know why this keeps backing off like it is. Might be a good idea to put a little Loctite on it. I'm not sure. So I'm gonna reach out to an airlift rep and get some answers after the holiday weekend is up. But this is a little concerning. It's not something I thought I would have to maintain and keep an eye on, but I guess it's going to be since this is now my second time fixing this. So. I'm gonna go ahead and get this removed and uh, get it twisted the right direction. Alrighty guys, that's gonna do it. Sweaty, man. Alrighty guys, you saw me put everything back together. I was able to take my mallet and a flathead and lock that collar down and cinch it on there really snug. So I don't have any fears about that right now. I'm gonna check it though, uh, just to be overly cautious. And every time I go to the track and I swap wheels out, I'll double check that and I'll bring the tools I need to uh, make that adjustment if it happens again. Uh, next up, I think I'm gonna go to a, uh, a gas station. It's called Love's. It's like a truck stop down here. Actually, they're all over the country. What am I talking about? It's a national account. So I'm gonna go to a Love's truck stop and you can weigh your car for like 10 or 15 bucks, I think I was told. So I think another video I'm gonna do is weigh that so you guys have an idea of how much this car weighs in its drag setup. So what I'll do is 
I'll take the passenger seat out and I'll put the drag wheels, those bad boys, on the car so that we have an uh, accurate reading of what this car weighs while we're out at the track racing. I think that'll be a cool video to make. So keep your eyes peeled for that. Uh, if you liked the drag racing stuff, uh, let me know in the comments below. I thought the last video was pretty good. Uh, it was good to go out and learn the suspension on the car. So I'm stoked on that. Uh, if you have any questions about my setup overall, leave those down in the comments and I'll be sure to answer those the best I can. Other than that, it's been Sean or Mustang 09 and I appreciate you guys watching. We'll catch you back here next time. Take it easy. Peace.